If you'll go with me one more transition, because I want to walk over here and show you the new iMac. Yeah, it's been here for a little bit of a while, and uh, I've had a chance. I've been using this. This is my studio, my office computer, so I use this day in, day out at Twit. And you know me. I kind of, I kind of like these Apple computers, and I, uh, when, the, uh, when the extra razor-thin uh, iMac was announced last year, about six months ago, maybe not quite that much. Um, I immediately uh, ordered one. It took uh, a couple of months to get it. I didn't get it till uh, January or February. <clears throat> but now you can see it, it's a little deceptive when it talks about razor thin. So this is, from this angle, yeah, it's pretty thin looking. But as you turn it a little bit, you'll see, and of course, that makes a lot of sense. There's a bulge here that allows the electronics. What do you give up? Well, there's no more optical drive because there's nowhere to put the optical drive. In return, you do get an SD card slot, and you're giving up nine pounds of weight. And that was the thing uh, John and I noticed almost immediately. This is the lightest iMac I've ever used. It is uh, just about 21 pounds, not as light as a notebook computer, but a nine pounds lighter than its predecessor iMac, which was a lot thicker. Um, you also give up a certain amount of, uh, uh, of expandability. It's a little bit harder to get into this thing. It has four 8-gig RAM slots, and it is at least uh, you can at least add RAM to this. You do give up the Visa mount that we liked so much because we used to mount our, uh, the old iMac on an arm. This no longer works with the Visa mount, I'm sorry to say. There is a, an adapter, a third-party adapter you can get to uh, turn this into a Visa mount. But, you know, I have to say, given uh, how beautiful this is and how... Uh, thin it is, it's not as big a deal. And how light it is, not as big a deal. It's really quite easy to reposition uh, on the table. Now, what did this uh, include in it? Now, we, we kind of went all out on it. We got the top of the line i7 quad core, 3.4 gigahertz, speed stepping up to 3.9 gigahertz. We didn't max it out on RAM. You can get up to uh, 64 gigs of RAM, or I'm sorry, 32 gigs of RAM. We got uh, 16, two slots uh, filled. Although, as I said, again, later I can uh, upgrade this if I want. And we also bought something Apple's touting called the Fusion Drive. Fusion's kind of an interesting idea. This is a unique Apple technology uh, that uh, gives you a three terabyte drive but a small SSD drive is kind of uh, included in the drive. So let me, uh, let me first of all show you what the drive looks like uh, if I open uh, the About This Mac uh, and we get more info here. I can show you the storage. It looks like it's a, a 3.11 terabyte uh, drive. You don't see two drives in here. But you do note, because it's a Fusion drive, it says hard drive plus flash storage. I'm going to open up my... Um, uh, I've, I've done a little bit of a, um, a disk benchmark on here. Let me just open up the uh, benchmarks and I can show you. I'll compare this uh, to the fastest disk I got, uh, which this is an SSD in my MacBook Retina, which is a very fast um, uh, SSD from Otherworld Computing. I upgraded it. Let's compare this to the Fusion Drive that is built into the uh, the new iMac. One of the features of the Fusion Drive is the operating system watches as you access data and moves files that you access a lot to the solid state drive. And it does this all automatically. So you get the benefit of three terabytes of storage. And as you can see, most of the speed benefit of an SSD drive, the drive on the left is a full SSD drive, uh, reads uh, at 500 megabytes per second. We got almost as close, 383 megabyte per second read times on the Fusion Drive. The write times were even closer, uh, 308 megabytes per second uh, write times on the standard SSD drive, 286 megabytes per second on the Fusion Drive. The thing that's most interesting is you run the benchmark on the Fusion Drive. It actually speeds up because it says, oh, I guess Leo really wants this file, and it moves it to the SSD drive and gets a lot of speed. I really like the Fusion Drive. I frankly really like this computer. It's extremely fast, the fastest Mac I've ever owned. Uh, we got the kind of top of the line GeForce card. You have some choices, the GTX uh, 680 uh, card or the 660 card. We got the 680 MMX, or MX, I should say. Uh, gives me a very nice, on this 27 inch display, uh, resolution of um, 20, um, 2560 by 1440. Very high resolution. Not Retina because it is such a big display, but absolutely gorgeous. And as I said, it's very snappy, probably snappier because it's not retina. I'm able to switch back and forth uh, between uh, desktops very, very quickly 
uh, on this display. Um, it also comes with a very large component of ports. In fact, if you let me flip it around here, I can show you. It's got uh, three USB, I'm sorry, four USB uh, three ports here. Those are very fast uh, ports. It's got two Thunderbolt ports, which means you can drive another monitor or two or three or four monitors uh, off of this. Uh, and, you know, if you worry about expandability, I know there's no new Mac Pro, but one of the nice things about uh, this new iMac is because you can get a Thunderbolt a card case or a variety of other Thunderbolt extensions, you probably could do many of the things you would do, including add a lot of extra very fast drives via Thunderbolt. Uh, it also has a gigabit Ethernet, um, Wi-Fi, A, B, G, and N, uh, Bluetooth 4.0 in here, and you see an SD card reader. Kind of ungainly placement for the SD card reader, but it's there's nowhere else to put it. This is so thin, you have to put it on the back. So if you do want to use your SD card, you're going to have to reach around behind uh, the iMac. Normally, uh, you won't even have this cable. You just have a single power cable. It comes with the Magic, uh, the Apple uh, Magic Trackpad or the Apple Mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard. So these are wireless. It's a really beautiful combination, just right for living room or any desk where you just don't want to have, uh, you know, a, a, a big bulky computer. Very fast. No fans as far as I can tell. Um, just just a really a gorgeous uh, display. Pros, the screen, you got to say, is just fantastic. 27-inch screen. They also make a 21-inch model. Uh, the, the, <laughs> this one, uh, as configured with all the top-of-the-line stuff, is almost $3,000, but you can obviously cut quite a bit. They start at $1,799 for the 21-inch. Um, it also uh, is very, very uh, fast. I found it to be uh, the fastest Mac uh, I've ever used. Cons, well, it's a little pricey, as all Macintoshes are. And lack of built-in expandability options um, means it's perhaps not the ideal solution for somebody who needs many, many drives, things like that. Although I have to say, having two Thunderbolt ports helps me out a little bit with that. If you ask me, try, buy, don't buy, that's an absolute buy. If you're a Macintosh aficionado, this is the most beautiful, the fastest iMac Apple has ever made. I don't miss an optical drive. You can always add an external one for 100 bucks, but I don't even think I really need it. It's been a long time since I've uh, inserted optical media, even for installations. Even if you're putting something like Microsoft Office on here nowadays, you, you download it from the Internet. So that's not a big, uh, a big uh, negative. I really like the new iMac. I'm very happy uh, we bought it. And I mean, doesn't that just look... It feels like I've just got a piece of paper with a picture on it. I mean, it just really is a, a gorgeous display. Definitely, definitely a buy.